cooperate in your Mr. Pritchard. It's quite a complicated case, but he's mending very nicely, I'm happy to say. Thank you, Doctor. I thought it best to send him straight to you. That's what I'm here for. Oh, Andrew, dear boy, uh, could you do an anaesthetic for me next week, Tuesday? Oh, yes, of course. As a matter of fact, sir, I wondered if I could have a word, please. Well, it won't take too long. I'm very late for the hospital. Look here, sir, I feel I must tell you. All the assistants feel our salary payments to you are unfair. It's an awkward thing to have to say, but we're having a meeting at my house tonight. I've spoken to Mr. Owen. He says our one-fifth salary payments are purely a matter between you and us. I'd rather you knew now. I hope you understand. I see. Well, I must get on to the hospital. Now, don't forget that anaesthetic on Tuesday. I think it's time we had a discussion about this transfer of cases. Uh, I... Because there are one or two others I won't explain. I thought perhaps we'd leave other matters until afterwards, Doctor. Uh... <laughs> After we've discussed uh, the main issue, you'd like some beer? You're very kind of you. Uh, perhaps I could start by saying I realize that I'm the youngest and most inexperienced here. I realize all that. Uh, for that there you are, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, would you like to sit down? Thank you. <clears throat> but uh, perhaps because I'm relatively new, I can get a fresh look at things. You see, it seems to me that in the first place, our system is all wrong. I mean, we go hacking through in our ancient ways like we were separate GPs fighting each other for custom. But we're not. We're not in competition directly. We're supposed to be members of the same medical society. I just think we have wonderful opportunities for working together. So why don't we take them? I mean, we're rushed off our feet. We've never a minute to ourselves. We're always on call. I mean, I see no need for it. Now, take night calls. You know how we all go to bed dreading. Well, I mean, I know I do. Dreading that we'll be called out. Now suppose, just suppose we knew we couldn't be called out. Suppose we organized for a start a cooperative system of night work with one doctor doing all night calls for one week and then going free the rest of the month. Now think how fresh we'd be for the day's work. It wouldn't work. Damn it to hell. I'd sooner stay up all night than trust old Foxborough there with one of my cases. Uh, all right, well, perhaps we'll leave that one till the next meeting. Uh... Anyway, now to the, uh, the main problem that's brought us here together. This business about paying Llewellyn one-fifth of our salaries. Now, I've spoken to Mr. Owen. He says it's purely a matter between us and Dr. Llewellyn. The society doesn't come into it. But he did point out that Llewellyn is already paid for his work, all his work, by the committee. So why should we pay him out of our money? I mean, the man's already rolling in it. I know, I know. But he's damn useful. It takes all the difficult cases. I know, but why should we pay him? Here, here! I think we should remember, Dr. Llewellyn is a man of high standing and qualification. And he does go out of his way to take our difficult cases. You want him to take them? Well, of course I do. Who doesn't? I do. The first rule of any practice. Get rid of the difficult cases. Get rid of them. But... We're doctors, damn it all. Oh. Assistant doctor. Ah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that gives Llewellyn the right to bleed us. Well, I don't understand. I mean, why are we doctors? Surely it's our job to treat difficult cases. Oxborough is saying Llewellyn is better qualified. I know, but he's paid for that by the committee. He already gets paid to see cases we refer to him. So why should we pay him as well as the committee? Look, look, the man has a lovely car and I'm paying for the spare wheel. We're paying for the whole car between us. Now look, we simply must put this through. Llewellyn knows we're after him. I told him we were having this meeting tonight. You did what? He, he knows that we're here. Well, to be fair, I, I told him we weren't going to go behind the man's back. Damn it to hell, Madsen. Oh, I'm off. Do you realize what you've done, man? We'll be lucky to have a job tomorrow. Good night to you. This is awful. Awful. It's terrible. I shall go and see him. I had nothing to do with this. Roxborough, wait. We must talk. And we didn't even take any other business.
I shouldn't have gone after him. I didn't say you shouldn't have gone after him. All I said was you should have waited. I mean, if you'd known how they were likely to react, you wouldn't have called the meeting, would you? I could have smashed his headlamps in. Grinning at me. I'm so fed up. With me? No. You were right, Chris. I should have kept my mouth shut. I'm fed up with the work being made a fool of. Fed up with being an assistant slave. Look at Medley and Oxborough. I'd rather die, Chris. I realize I can't make you happy. Not me alone. You'll never be really satisfied while you're still an assistant doctor. So what do I do? You've got to stop being an assistant. Oh, yes, I'll apply for clinical research in Edinburgh. I wasn't thinking about research. Well, how else could I impress anybody? You know, I could be stuck here for life, Chris. Not necessarily. There is a way out. How? Oh. Become better qualified. And then you could apply for a better job. What is it? MD? MRCP. Member of the Royal College of Physicians. They only give that to the crown heads of Europe. Oh, it's impossible, Chris. You don't know what you're asking. There's all sorts of things you have to get first. I'll show you. I mean, languages for a start. There we are. Preliminary paper in four languages. Too compulsory. That's before you can even sit the damn thing. My French is terrible. The only Latin I know is dog lingo. But, Andrew, I'm a teacher. I can help with the languages. Oh, why don't you try? You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. You really think I could, don't you? Yes. I believe you could do anything you wanted. You've got all the determination in the world. Look, I'll help. I mean it. I'll stay up with you all night if you need it. It would be all night. Two years of nights. At least that. I'll be taking surgery, doing my round. I'll be on call every night. No, it's impossible. Nobody could do it. You don't know what you're asking, love. So what's the alternative? More and more frustration. Getting more and more irritable with yourself and me. Well, I don't think I can stand that, Andrew. I really don't. I just know one thing. You'll never be happy until you're doing what you want to do. Lovely. Help me, darling. Mm. There we are. Oh. Oh. oh, you've got them good. French and Latin. You decided not to do German, then? Well, I know more French than German. Mm. So when are we going to begin? Well, what about now? You've got two hours till surgery. All right. Uh, uh, madame. Oui, monsieur. Est-il possible que j'ai un café? A café. Yeah, well, as long as it comes in a cup. <laughs> <laughs> Certainement, monsieur. Yes, I'll tell him. 
Thank you. Goodbye. I'm sorry, darling. It's a call. I've only been going a month, Chris. I'm worn out already. I'll never do it, never. Yes, you will. threshold, basal metabolism, blood ureas. We never did any of this at college. The fallibility of the albumin test. <laughs> what about the fallibility of the candidate? Well, you're not giving up now. I've stayed up too many nights and made too many cups of coffee. Oh, you're a bra woman, Christine Manson. Am I? Aye, you are that. You wouldn't give up now, though, would you? No fear. We're on the last leg. Taking this exam, I suppose. Yes, it's taking every minute. I'm afraid I've had to give up the research until I've done it. No. Pretty. When do you take the exam? In three months. Which time? Then you can start up on the research. Oh, yes, but that's going to take a year to finish. Mm -hmm. These things take time. Miners have been underground for centuries. They can wait a year or two more, I suppose. Best of luck with the exam. Thanks, Mr. Rowan. Goodbye. Goodbye. Tampico. What's that? Tampico. It's in Mexico. Isn't it? Probably. It's from Philip. Philip Denny. Philip? What's he doing in Mexico? He says he's working as a surgeon on a tanker. Well, let me see. Good God. I decided to slip away to warm a climb, so I applied to the Oriental Steamshipping Company. They needed a sawbones. <laughs> I wasn't even interviewed. My MS apparently was good enough. Even for a valley doctor. He wants to know if I've used his microscope yet. No, I haven't. I don't have to take this exam. I could get an MD based upon the anthracite research. Instead of wasting my time killing myself taking an exam, I haven't a cat in health chance of passing. Andrew, the exam's only two weeks away. Now, you've got this far and you've worked so well. I'm killing myself for you. It is, you know, it's all for you, Chris. You've pushed me into this. Oh, forget I said that. Come on, I said forget it. My darling Chris, I finished the written papers today. I don't think I did too badly. Now I've just got the Sunday to get through, then the terrible part, the practical on Monday. It's too much to hope I'll get a question on an anthracite-related disease. 
My examiners will be Dr. Gadsby and Sir Robert Abbey. It's quite terrifying, really. Sir Robert is one of the most distinguished physicians in Europe. The others are holy terror. Apparently, he fails just about everybody. Hey, what's in there, can you tell me? All right. Look down at that slide. Tell me what you see. Well? These are blood cells, sir, but there's something I don't recognize. Didn't they teach you anything about tropical medicine at St. Andrews? It's a protozoa, sir. Ah, you're looking now, are you? Where do you think this patient comes from? What country of origin? Somewhere on the African continent, sir. It's a big place, Africa. What disease do we associate with this parasite? Uh, malaria, sir. Rubbish. Trypanosomiasis. Better. All right. Take that slide out. Replace it with one labeled B. What's in there, can you tell me? That's a fibroid uterus, sir. Uh, the next. That's a section of a carcinomatous liver, sir. Good. That one. Uh, it looks like aneurysm of the ascending aorta, sir. And uh, what do you think has caused it? I'd say tertiary syphilis, sir. Very good. The causative <coughs> organism and how do you demonstrate it in the primary infection? Spirochita pallida. Take a swab from the primary chancre. You can see against dark ground illumination. How do you treat syphilis in its primary stage? By an induction of malaria, sir, inducing a fever, or by an injection of an arsenical, neosalvarsan. Uh, who introduced neosalvarsan? Dr. Ellis, sir. Tell me, what do you know of the history of aneurysm? Well, Ambrose Parry is supposed to have discovered it. I beg your pardon? Supposed he did? Well, that's what the textbooks say, sir, but... I happened to be reading Celsus for the Latin exam, and I definitely came across the word. Celsus knew aneurysm, he described it in full. That's 13 centuries before Parry. Dr. Madison, if what you tell me is correct, and I should check it, it'll be the first original contribution I've ever had in an examination room. But if you're wrong, I won't be at all impressed. That's all. Thank you, sir. Oh, just one thing. Sir. Uh, what do you regard as the main principle, the basic idea which you keep before you when you're exercising the practice of your profession? Well, I suppose I keep telling myself not to take things for granted. I've only been in practice a short time, and I've already seen what wrong diagnosis can do. Thank you. Good day. Good day, sir. Dr. Finch, Dr. Lumley, Dr. Manson, Dr. Rotherell. Doctor! I've just 
come for you. There's been a fall down in number three. I'll ask for Ferret. Sam Bevan, he's on your list. You better look sharp and get there, Doctor. Well, he needs you, Doctor. Yes, all right. My bag, I'll leave my bag. Will you go to the house and fetch it for me? Yes. Take this. Frank, can I borrow the bike? Right away with it. Explain what's happened, will you? Now, what's happened? He's down. He's been trapped by a pole. We can't move him an inch. Come on. Come on. I can't move him, no help. Tried everything. Come on, Doctor. Come on, Doctor, come on, Doctor. Let him talk. Hello, Sam. You all right? Looks like you're going to have some am ambulance practice on me proper. Get me out of here, quick. Oh, don't worry, Sam. We'll soon have you out of here. When you wake up, you'll be in bed. Chloroform. Oh, my God, I dropped the bag running. I tripped. You can't talk to this. It's too late. This is morphine. It doesn't send you to sleep. Close your eyes and try to relax. I'm putting a tourniquet on, Sam. It helps.
Right. Hot uh, water bottles as soon as you get out. Right, Doctor. Do you realise it's the first chance we've had to talk since you set out for the exam? I wasn't thinking of talking. I saw Con Bowen out today with his family. Hmm? In their elongated car. <laughs> He's actually put it together. Hmm? Well, it seemed to sag a bit in the middle. <laughs> Crazy man. Are you angling after a car? No, of course not. I mean, I know I've paid off the Glen endowment, but... Oh, I don't know. I'd not thought about it. Maybe, maybe. Do you think we could? Darling, I'm not talking about a car. I, I just wanted to say that... Last time we visited the Bowlands... I liked the way you played with baby Bowland. Why? <laughs> Dr. Manson. You're not such a smart physician after all, are you? No. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. Are you certain? Yes. Oh, darling. Oh, no. Oh. these groceries delivered and stay cooped up here all day I'm all right not being the conscientious doctor mm. doesn't my role as a caring husband have anything to do with it <laughs> hmm? oh. still another four months to go all right but don't overdo it I won't I won't Cheerio, love. Right. oh Andrew it's the bridge I'm worried about it it's getting worse can't you do something about it? It's not my job as the committee. It's their bridge. Well, at least ask them. I will. I'll see you in. See you, love. Bye. Good How are you getting on, Doctor? Very well, Frank. My friend is the 153rd man I've examined in just over oh, five months. Very good. You're doctor. <laughs> Thanks, Will. Cheerio. Doctor. Tell boy. Have you found anything yet? Yes, I have. Every sputum sample I've taken shows bright particles of silica. What we call white spit. That's right. But I've also found a disturbingly high proportion of the TB bacillus. Look here, Frank. You see these ticks? Every one of these men show the bacillus. 
Now, I'm no chemist, and don't tell anyone I'm saying this, but I'm beginning to think that the effects of the dust isn't just physical. There may be chemical action in the lung. If I can prove that, we'll have really discovered something. But how do you prove it? Well, I find myself some guinea pigs. As a thesis, it should get me an MD. Nobody's done anything as original. Well, not in dust inhalation, anyway. When will you send it? Next week. Oh, my old professor will be pleased. He wanted me to do clinical research at Edinburgh. You'll have two more qualifications. Dr. Manson, MRCP, MD. Hmm? Sounds good? Yes, it does. Sad, really. What is? Well, having to kill them. Oh, don't you start getting sentimental. Here, read that. From one Reverend Paddy of the Sinai Chapel. Opposed to such black arts as vivisection. Not one word of praise for what I'm doing for mankind. Are you going to reply to him? No, I am not. Who does he think he is? Makes my blood boil. But he says he's going to report you to the Medical Aid Committee. Oh, let him. I'm just supposed to be a hero with the committee. Of course I'm worried. In another couple of months, I'll have absolute, conclusive proof that breathing that dust causes these diseases. And neither Reverend Parry nor anyone else is going to stop me now. Is there anybody here who would deny that an animal is as much God's creation as a human being? Animals don't experiment on other animals for the sake of one superior species. Is it progress? Can it be called God's will to trap, disembowel, feed with poison, inject with harmful chemicals in order that we should establish a malevolent superiority over the animal kingdom? Why are we so important that we can allow all these terrible things to be done? Is it even? Christian. It's Christian for the men who get no compo. Oh, you keep your mouth shut. Doctor Manson, that is better for us. Yes, it is not a question. He risked his neck for Sam Bevan, he did. Yes. I am not suggesting Doctor Manson is doing anything wrong. But we have put certain questions to him, and so far he has not answered them. Why should he? No, sir. Oh, no, he should. Let the minister speak. All I am asking for is an inquiry into it, that is all. I am not attacking Dr. Manson personally. But I must warn you all, if Dr. Manson is practicing vivisection, then you are all responsible because he is employed by you. One of the questions I have asked him is, has he got a license? from the home office. Because if he has not, and he is carrying out experiments with animals, then you will be in trouble on two counts. You employ him, and his laboratory is on your property. Thank you very much. It's in the laboratory. Mr. Owen. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Owen. Hello, Doctor. How are you? Very well, thank you. I'll see you later. Cheerio, love. Sorry to disturb you. That's all right. You can see how I'm getting on. Well, that's what I called about, as a matter of fact. The uh, society wanted a report from me. Well, you can tell them I'm near. Look. That top line there represents all the anthracite workers I've examined. Mm. This bottom one here, the non-anthracite workers. Well, you can see. In the anthracite workers, there's a strong frequency of the tubercle bacillus, but not in these others. Well, that's it, then. You've done it. No need to carry on. <laughs> now I have to prove that the dust is actually harmful to lung tissue. I'm well on the way, but for the home office to act, it must be watertight. You, uh, you do it with these guinea pigs, sir? Yes, but there's even more. 
It's a high-sounding name for fibrosis of the lung through coal dust. It's pneumoconiosis. But anthracite is held to be harmless. It's not thought to be chemically active. Well, I think it is. If I'm right, this research could lead to more than just getting your men compensation. I don't suppose you've got a license from the Home Office? No. Well, the committee sent me to ask you. Tell your committee I'm your discovery that will improve the lives of their men. Tell them workers all over the country will benefit. And if they're still bothered about a few guinea pigs compared with that, you tell them to go to hell. next two days off. These things do happen. And always say if you got her in sooner, that, that bridge had been repaired. But you've done all you can. Now go home, rest, and come back and see her tonight. Do you think she could have another? I'd say the signs aren't good. When I was a lad, we had a creepy stool in the kirk. You stood up on it and confessed your sins in public. I was too busy, wasn't I? Too busy doing my research. I suppose the Reverend Parry would call it divine retribution for injuring God's innocent creatures. Mrs. Davis? Is Mrs. Manson here? Yes. Yes. My husband tells me we're expecting a baby soon. Yes, that's right. Well, I've got some baby clothes I was giving to charity. But they're unused, they're brand new. I thought you might like them. Well, there's someone at the door. Well, maybe you'd like to come round some time and look at them. Tomorrow? Yes. Yes, that's fine. Bye. Mrs. Manson, good morning. I'm Midwell Parry, Minister of Sinai Chapel. These gentlemen, Mr. Chenkin from the Medical Society Committee, and Mr. Bates from the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. If we could uh, come in a moment. I'm afraid my husband's out on his rounds. In that case, come in, gentlemen. Please, come It's all right, Mrs. Manson. Please. We believe your husband is carrying out vivisection experiments with animals on these premises, which are not licensed. Just one moment. Would you please wait outside? Excuse me? Ah, here we are. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Manson. What are you doing? Will you please leave my house? Uh, just a moment. Whose house? Look at this, Mr. Reeds. Look at these poor, dumb creatures. If you don't leave, I shall call the police. What for? Trespassing on committee property. We have a right to be here and to know what's going on. What is this? Do I see blood? Hmm. That is no. blood all right. The whole place is an abattoir. Before you go on, I think you all ought to know that my husband was promised full support in his research on your behalf by Mr. Owen. Oh, Mr. Owen has no authority to do anything on our behalf unless we tell him to. The fact is, these premises aren't licensed. And we're taking these animals away. Oh, Mr. No, Bates, please. 
I'm afraid I am empowered to do that, Mrs. Manson. Will you tell Dr. Manson that we've been here with Mr. Bates from the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals? And if you have any complaints, Mrs. Manson, go to the committee. <laughs> right, gentlemen, uh, now that Dr. Manson's here, we can conduct the main business of the day. Call upon Mr. Shankin. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Secretary, gentlemen, I won't uh, beat about the bush. The facts of the case are these. Dr. Manson has been carrying out experiments on live animals, namely guinea pigs, by forcing them to breathe in silica dust and causing unnecessary suffering. Now, Dr. Manson has no authority to do such work. It's not what we hired him for. Furthermore, it was done on the committee's time and in the committee's property. Namely, the house we rent to him. Now, the worst aspect of the case, from our point of view, is that it was done without a license or necessary permit. A very serious offence, and one likely to bring us into disrepute, if not downright conflict, with the law. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Chenkin, but may I point out that Mr. Chenkin is quite right. If the committee feels that Dr. Manson is guilty of an offence, then so are we all. All I'm saying is that it is not in our interest to pursue this matter. Owen's oh, right. Owen's oh, right. We don't want no trouble to forget it. But what if you're forgetting one thing? It's out already. The Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals knows all about it. And we as a committee must be seen to be on the right side. And if you're the proper medicine, that's his trouble. You can wait an hour and not get your bottle filled. No. Aye, and you can be trapped underground as well. And he'll come down there and he'll save you a life. Oh, no, you wait an hour. And don't get proper certificates. But that's not why he's here. He's here because he turned his house, you know, our house, into an abattoir. Oh. I saw blood on the bench with my own eyes. Oh. What I'm calling for is Dr. Manson's resignation. Oh. 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 Listen! Listen! Now, perhaps it would be a good idea if we were to let Dr. Manson state his case. I mean, that's what he's here for. And it's only right and proper that he should. Let's get on with it, <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chenkin says he saw blood on my bench in the laboratory. It wasn't blood. It was a stain caused by me accidentally spilling the fusine bottle, which contains a dark red liquid. As to the accusation that I've been causing unnecessary suffering to animals, may I ask what you were all doing taking white mice and canaries down the mine? For pleasure? Or perhaps to experiment with them? To see if they react to black damp by dropping dead? That's different. Is it? They die, don't they? To help you survive. Well, that's what I've been doing. Because many of you are getting lung disease down the anthracite mine and not getting compensation. Now I spend every minute of my spare time, not your time, mine. I'm going to have some spare time, but not a lot. Slaving away, not for me, for you. Experimenting simply because your diseases are not registered as being industrially caused. And I've been trying to prove that they are. And if I don't give you medicine, it's not because I don't want to, it's because it's useless for what's in your lung, Jack Pridmore. Now, I've discovered an important link between the disease and the dust. I'm hoping that shortly the government will recognize your entitlement to full compensation as a result of my work. Now, all this is possible because I've used a few guinea pigs now I put it to you. Are the lives of a few guinea pigs more important than yours? Oh, I understand some people would say they are. But in this world, this real world away from fancy theory, ask yourselves honestly, is it your life with your wives and your children dependent on you or on animals? It's your choice. Because there's no other way of proving your right to that compensation. Gentlemen, I've just been handed a telegram by Mrs. Manson. It could not have come at a more appropriate time. 
You didn't tell us you'd send a report on your work, Doctor. May I read this? It's from the clerk of the Senate, St. Andrews University. And it reads, Congratulations! For your thesis on dust inhalation, you are awarded the MD. Letter follows. Now I happen to know what the MD is. Dr. Fuelling's got it. It's a very high qualification, I can tell you. Now, if Mr. Chenking doesn't object, I suggest we ask Dr. Manson to leave us so we can discuss his case. No, I'd rather not, Mr. No. Owen. I think we've all said enough, don't you? Why don't you take your vote? Oh, very well, we will. Right, gentlemen. All those in favour of Dr. Manson leaving. All those against. Well, that's it then, gentlemen. The decision is that Dr. Manson stays. Mr. Chairman, gentlemen of the committee, the only reason I'm standing here today was because I believed I had to convince you that what I did was vital. And now that I've done that, I'll give you one month's notice from today. Now you see what you've done, that chicken! Well, all I can see is good riddance. I'll shut your fucking do you know what you've done? You've just lost us the best doctor we ever had. Please? Yes, I've resigned. Given a month's notice. Come on, let's get out of this place. Where are we going? London. Civilization. We get a practice. The sky's the limit. Next on a and &E, Return to Yesterday on the Golden Age of Television. Jean Crane stars as a girl fighting for her life in Wait Till Spring. pigs more important than yours? Oh, I understand some people would say they are. But in this world, this real world away from fancy theory, ask yourselves honestly, is it your life with your wives and your children dependent on you or on animals? It's your choice because there's no other way of proving your right to that compensation. Gentlemen, I've just been handed a telegram by Mrs. Manson. It could not have come at a more appropriate time. You didn't tell us you'd send a report on your work, Doctor. May I read this? It's from the clerk of the Senate, St. Andrews University. And it reads, Congratulations! For your thesis on dust inhalation, you are awarded the MD. Letter follows. Now I happen to know what the MD is. Dr. Fuelling's got it. It's a very high qualification, I can tell you. Now, if Mr. Chenking doesn't object, I suggest we ask Dr. Manson to leave us so we can discuss his case. No, I'd rather not, Mr. No. Owen. I think we've all said enough, don't you? Why don't you take your vote? Oh, very well, we will. Right, gentlemen. All those in favor of Dr. Manson leaving. Oh, yeah. All those against. Well, that's it then, gentlemen. The decision is that Dr. Manson stays. Mr. 
Mr. Chairman, gentlemen of the committee, the only reason I'm standing here today was because I believed I had to convince you that what I did was vital. And now that I've done that, I'll give you one month's notice from today. Do you know what you've done? You've just lost us the best doctor we ever had. Please? Yes, I've resigned. Given a month's notice. Come on, let's get out of this place. Where are we going? London. Civilization. We get a practice. The sky's the limit. It seems to me that in the first place, our system is all wrong. I mean, we go hacking through in our ancient ways like we were separate GPs fighting each other for custom. But we're not. We're not in competition directly. We're supposed to be members of the same medical society. I just think we have wonderful opportunities for working together. So why don't we take them? I mean, we're rushed off our feet. We've never a minute to ourselves. We're always on call. I mean, I see no need for it. Now, take night calls. You know how we all go to bed dreading... Well, I mean, I know I do. Dreading that we'll be called out. Now, suppose... Just suppose we knew we couldn't be called out. Suppose we organised for a start a cooperative system of night work with one doctor doing all night calls for one week and then going free the rest of the month. Now, think how fresh we'd be for the day's work. It wouldn't work. Damn it to hell. I'd sooner stay up all night than trust old folks that are there with one of my cases. Uh, all right, well, perhaps we'll leave that one till the next meeting. Uh, anyway, now to the, uh, the main problem that's brought us here together. This business about paying Llewellyn one-fifth of our salaries. Now, I've spoken to Mr. Owen. He says it's purely a matter between us and Dr. Llewellyn. The society doesn't come into it. But he did point out that Llewellyn is already paid for his work, all his work, by the committee. So why should we pay him out of our money? I mean, the man's already rolling in it. I know, I know. But he's damn useful. He takes all the difficult cases. I know, but why should we pay him? Here, here! I think we should remember, Dr. Llewellyn is a man of high standing and qualification. And he does go out of his way to take our difficult cases. You want him to take them? Well, of course I do. Who doesn't? I do. The first rule of any practice. Get rid of the difficult cases. Get rid of them. But... We're doctors, damn it all. Assistant doctor. Ah, <laughs> yes, yeah, so that gives Llewellyn the right to bleed us. Well, I don't understand. I mean, why are we doctors? Surely it's our job to treat difficult cases. Oxborough is saying Llewellyn is better qualified. I know, but he's paid for that by the committee. He already gets paid to see cases we refer to him. So why should we pay him as well as the committee? Look, look, the man has a lovely car, and I'm paying for the spare wheel. We're paying for the whole car between us. Now, look, we simply must put this through. Llewellyn knows we're after him. I told him we were having this meeting tonight. He did what? He, he knows that we're here. Well, to be fair, I told him we weren't going to go behind the man's back. Damn it to hell, Madsen. Oh, I'm off. Do you realize what you've done, man? We'll be lucky to have a job tomorrow. Good night to you. This is awful. Awful. Terrible. I shall go and see him. I had nothing to do with it. Well, my job is the committee. It's their bridge. Well, at least ask them. I will. I'll see you in. See you, Bye. getting on, Doctor. Very well, Frank. Our friend here's the 153rd man I've examined in just over oh, five months. Very good. Oh, doctor. <laughs> Thanks, Will. Cheerio. Doctor. Okay. Sorry, boy. Have you found anything yet? Yes, I have. 
every sputum sample I've taken shows bright particles of silica. What we call white spit. That's right. But I've also found a disturbingly high proportion of the TB bacillus. Look here, Frank. You see these ticks? Every one of these men show the bacillus. Now, I'm no chemist and don't tell anyone I'm saying this, but I'm beginning to think that the effects of the dust isn't just physical. There may be chemical action in the lung. If I can prove that, we'll have really discovered something. But how do you prove it? Well, I find myself some guinea pigs. As a thesis, it should get me an M.D. Nobody's done anything as original. Well, not in dust inhalation, anyway. When will you send it? Next week. Oh, my old professor will be pleased. He wanted me to do clinical research at Edinburgh. You'll have two more qualifications. Dr. Manson, M.R.C.P. M.D. Hmm? Sounds good? Yes, it does. Sad, really. What is? Well, having to kill them. Oh, don't you start getting sentimental. Yeah, read that. From one Reverend Parry of the Sinai Chapel. Opposed to such black arts as vivisection. Not one word of praise for what I'm doing for mankind. Are you going to reply to him? No, I am not. Who does he think he is? Makes my blood boil. But he says he's going to report you to the Medical Aid Committee. Oh, let him. Aren't I supposed to be a hero with the committee? Well, of course I'm worried. In another couple of months, I'll have absolute, conclusive proof that breathing that dust causes these diseases. And neither Reverend Parry nor anyone else is going to stop me now. Is there anybody here who would deny that an animal is as much God's creation as a human being? Animals don't experiment on other animals for the sake of one superior species. Mm. Sorry, darling, it's a call. I've only been going a month, Chris. I'm worn out already. I'll never do it, never. Yes, you will. threshold, basal metabolism, blood ureas. We never did any of this at college. The fallibility of the albumin test. <laughs> what about the fallibility of the candidate? Well, you're not giving up now. I've stayed up too many nights and made too many cups of coffee. Oh, you're a bra woman, Christine Manson. Am I? Aye, you are that. 
You wouldn't give up now, though, would you? No fear. We're on the last leg. Fifty-third man of examined in just over four oh, five months. Very good, Your doctor. Thanks, Will. Cheerio. Okay. Sorry, boy. Have you found anything yet? Yes, I have. Every sputum sample I've taken shows bright particles of silica. What we call white spit. That's right. But I've also found a disturbingly high proportion of the TB bacillus. Look here, Frank. You see these ticks? Every one of these men show the bacillus. Now, I'm no chemist, and don't tell anyone I'm saying this, but I'm beginning to think that the effects of the dust isn't just physical. There may be chemical action in the lung. If I can prove that, we'll have really discovered something. But how do you prove it? Well, I find myself some guinea pigs. As a thesis, it should get me an M.D. Nobody's done anything as original. Well, not in dust inhalation, anyway. When will you send it? Next week. Oh, my old professor will be pleased. He wanted me to do clinical research at Edinburgh. You'll have two more qualifications. Dr. Manson, MRCP, M.D. Hmm? Sounds good? Yes, it does. Sad, really. What is? Well, having to kill them. Oh, don't you start getting sentimental. Here, read that. From one Reverend Parry of the Sinai Chapel. Opposed to such black arts as vivisection. Not one word of praise for what I'm doing for mankind. Are you going to reply to him? No, I am not. Who does he think he is? Makes my blood boil. But he says he's going to report you to the Medical Aid Committee. Oh, let him. I'm just supposed to be a hero with the committee. Of course I'm worried. In another couple of months, I'll have absolute, conclusive proof that breathing that dust causes these diseases. And neither Reverend Parry nor anyone else is going to stop me now. Is there anybody here who would deny that an animal is as much God's creation as a human being? Animals don't experiment on other animals for the sake of one superior species. Is it progress? Can it be called God's will to trap, disembowel, feed with poison, inject with harmful chemicals in order that we should establish our malevolent superiority over the animal kingdom? Why are we so important that we cannot... But Andrew, I'm a teacher. I can help with the languages. Well, why don't you try? You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. You really think I could, don't you? Yes. I believe you could do anything you wanted. You've got all the determination in the world. Look, I'll help. I mean it. I'll stay up with you all night if you need it. It would be all night. Two years of nights. At least that. I'd be taking surgery, doing my round. I'd be on call every night. Nobody could do it. You don't know what you're asking, love. So what's the alternative? More and more frustration. Getting more and more irritable with yourself and me. Well, I don't think I can stand that, Andrew. I really don't. I just know one thing. You'll never be happy until you're doing what you want to do. That looks lovely. Help me, darling. Mm. Damn it. Oh. Oh. oh, you've got them good. French and Latin. You decided not to do German, then? Well, I know more French than German. Mm. So when are we going to begin? 
Well, what about now? You've got two hours till surgery. All right. Uh, uh, madame. Oui, monsieur? Est-il possible que j'ai un café? Un café? Yeah, well, as long as it comes in a cup. <laughs> <laughs> Certainement, monsieur. Uh. report on your work, Doctor. May I read this? It's from the clerk of the Senate, St. Andrews University. And it reads, Congratulations! For your thesis on dust inhalation, you are awarded the MD. Letter follows. Now I happen to know what the MD is. Dr. Llewellyn's got it. It's a very high qualification, I can tell you. Now, if Mr. Chenkin doesn't object, I suggest we ask Dr. Manson to leave us so we can discuss his case. No, I'd rather not, Mr. No. Owen. I think we've all said enough, don't you? Why don't you take your vote? Oh, very well, we will. Right, gentlemen. All those in favor of Dr. Manson leaving. All those against. Well, that's it then, gentlemen. The decision is that Dr. Manson stays. Mr. Chairman, gentlemen of the committee, the only reason I'm standing here today was because I believed I had to convince you that what I did was vital. And now that I've done that, I'll give you one month's notice from today. Say good riddance! Oh, shut your oh, fucking Do you know what you've done? You've just lost us the best doctor we ever had. Please? Yes, I've resigned. Given a month's notice. Come on, let's get out of this place. Where are we going? London. Civilization. We get a practice. The sky's the limit. Next on a and &E, Return to Yesterday on the Golden Age of Television. Jean Crane stars as a girl fighting for her life in Wait Till Spring. Dr. Lumley, Dr. Manson, Dr. Rotherell.
There's been a fall down in number three. I'll ask for Ferret. Sam Bevan, he's on your list. You better look sharp and get there, Doctor. Well, he needs you, Doctor. Yes, all right. My bag, I'll leave my bag. Will you go up to the house and fetch it for me? Yes. Take this. Frank, can I borrow the bike? Fly away with it. Explain what's happened, will you? Now, what's happened? His arm's been trapped by a pole. We can't move him an inch. Come on. Come on. Me from fancy theory, ask yourselves honestly. Is it your life? With your wives and your children dependent on you? Or on animals? It's your choice, because there's no other way of proving your right to that compensation. Gentlemen, I've just been handed a telegram by Mrs. Manson. It could not have come at a more appropriate time. You didn't tell us you'd send a report on your work, Doctor. May I read this? It's from the clerk of the Senate, St. Andrews University. And it reads, congratulations. For your thesis on dust inhalation, you are awarded the MD. Letter follows. Now I happen to know what the MD is. Dr. Fuelling's got it. It's a very high qualification, I can tell you. Now, if Mr. Chenking doesn't object, I suggest we ask Dr. Manson to leave us so we can discuss his case. No, I'd rather not, Mr. No. Owen. I think we've all said enough, don't you? Why don't you take your vote? Oh, very well, we will. Right, gentlemen. All those in favour of Dr. Manson leaving. All those against. Well, that's it then, gentlemen. The decision is that Dr. Manson stays. Mr. Chairman, gentlemen of the committee, the only reason I'm standing here today was because I believed I had to convince you that what I did was vital. And now that I've done that, I'll give you one month's notice from today. Now you see what you've done, Ed Shaking! Well, I can see good riddance! Oh, shut your fucking You've just lost us the best doctor we ever had. Yeah. 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 Yes, I've resigned. Given a month's notice. Come on, let's get out of this place. Where are we going? London. Civilization. We get a practice. The sky's the limit. Mrs. Manson, good morning. I'm Edwell Parry, Minister of Sinai Chapel. These gentlemen, Mr. Chenkin from the Medical Society Committee, and Mr. Bates from the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. If we could uh, come in a moment. I'm afraid my husband's out on his rounds. In that case, come in, gentlemen. Oh, it's all right, Mrs. Manson. We believe your husband is carrying out vivisection experiments with animals on these premises, which are not licensed. Just one moment. Would you please wait outside? Excuse me. Ah, here we are. I'm sorry, Mrs. Manson. What are you doing? Will you please leave my house? Uh, just a moment. Whose house? Look at this, Mr. Bates. Look at these poor dumb creatures. If you don't leave, I shall call the police. What for? 
trespassing on committee property. We have a right to be here and to know what's going on. What is this? Do I see blood? Hmm? That is no. blood all right. The whole place is an abattoir. Before you go on, I think you all ought to know that my husband was promised full support in his research on your behalf by Mr. Owen. Oh, Mr. Owen has no authority to do anything on our behalf unless we tell him to. The fact is, these premises aren't licensed. And we're taking these animals away. Oh, Mr. No, Bates? Please. I'm afraid I am empowered to do that, Mrs. Manson. Will you tell Dr. Manson that we've been here with Mr. Bates from the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals? And if you have any complaints, Mrs. Manson, go to the committee. Right, gentlemen, uh, now that Dr. Manson's here, we can conduct the main business of the day. I call upon Mr. Shankin. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Secretary, gentlemen, I won't uh, beat about the bush. The facts of the case are these. Dr. Manson has been carrying out experiments on live animals, namely guinea pigs, by forcing them to breathe in silica dust and causing unnecessary suffering. Now, Dr. Manson has no authority to do such work. It's not what we hired him for. Furthermore, it was done on the committee's time and in the committee's property, namely the house we rent to him. Now, the worst aspect of the case, from our point of view, is that it was done without a license or necessary permit. A very serious offence, and one likely to bring us into disrepute, if not downright conflict with the law. At least that. I'll be taking surgery, doing my round. I'll be on call every night. No, it's impossible. Nobody could do it. You don't know what you're asking, love. So what's the alternative? More and more frustration. Getting more and more irritable with yourself and me. Well, I don't think I can stand that, Andrew. I really don't. I just know one thing. You'll never be happy until you're doing what you want to do. That looks lovely. Help me, darling. Mm. There we go. Oh. oh, you've got them good. French and Latin. You decided not to do German, then? Well, I know more French than German. Mm. So when are we going to begin? Well, what about now? You've got two hours till surgery. All right. Uh, uh, madame. Oui, monsieur. Est-il possible que j'ai un café? Un café? Yeah, well, as long as it comes in a cup. <laughs> <laughs> Certainement, monsieur. Sorry, darling, it's a call. I've only been 